feel bad. Do you think? Doesn't feel like a lot though. Ten cool, dude. She. <laughs> I did not think. Cool. I didn't think she'd pull like this. I haven't really ridden in this thing, but can you? Do you think it's run better than it ever has? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. <laughs> What's going on everybody welcome to horsepower tube my name is kyle today i'm working on my buddy john's uh monte carlo this is a 85 monte carlo he's had it for a long time it was actually his grandma's he's had it since he was a teenager and uh, he's pretty unhappy with uh the way it looks under the hood uh many years back uh these steel braided hoses were real real popular they're kind of looking pretty bad now uh we just want to clean up underneath here uh for some reason it's a factory this engine would have came with the HEI distributor like this. And for some reason, when he swapped in, so it's got a 350 swapped in it. They removed the factory 305, this is a 350. Uh, for some reason, when he was only a teenager at the time, the older gentleman that helped him put him in, they put this distributor in. And what I don't like about that distributor is it's lacking the, uh, the vacuum canister. That vacuum canister, it adds about, Depends on how you set it up it can add like 10 to 20 degrees of timing at idle or like real light throttle and that helps uh helps with the power at light throttle to like mid throttle it, at wide open throttle it does nothing but in between it there it gets you know progressively less impact but from an idle it makes a big difference um like i said it gives more power more miles per gallon it actually makes a better run cooler so on a street car that's something that you would want i'm not sure why this this is good for race cars because like i said a wide open throttle doesn't make a difference if it's if it's just a race car that you're just flooring all the time you know that's fine but, and but this is much i think that's a lot better for a street car plus gets coal pack and everything here we can get rid of that and clean that up your coal pack is actually inside your cap here this big square on top your coal packs inside there so what we're going to do today is we're going to get rid of these hoses. They're also really long. We're going to uh, clean up the routing a little bit, make it look a little cleaner. So, and then we got all new plug wires. We're going to make our own plug wires uh, instead of running them on top here. I actually like to run them underneath the block and come up from underneath where you can hardly even see them. It looks super clean. You guys will see what that looks like when we get done here. And then the other thing we're going to do is see is a transmission leak. Uh, these trains, man, they seem like they leak a lot, especially if a car sits for several years. If you got like a quart gasket or even this rubber gasket, it seems like after a while, man, they just start leaking. So we're switching to a, uh, this is an aluminum transmission pan. And uh, the f edge of this is flat. So your factory steel pan, it's got these raised edges in between all your bolt holes. And uh, it's made to pinch this or the cork and uh, like I said, those end up leaking after a while. So we went with the uh, the flat rail here, and what we're going to use is some uh, some good uh, gasket maker called the Right Stuff. And uh, without those raised edges, we can just use that gasket maker. And uh, that stuff, man, it'll last forever. It'll never leak again. So that'll be good for that too. So we're going to go ahead, uh, get this thing jacked up, get some of these hoses and stuff off here, and then some of this wiring too. You got some wiring. Like look at this. This here is a. Uh, Looks like it's for his coolant temperature gauge. It actually starts back here, runs all the way around the whole car, and then into here, which is really dumb. It just, there's wires. I hate these uh, yellow, these bright yellow connectors. I want to get rid of those too. And then for some reason, he has this factory mechanical fan plus an electric fan. So one of these, when it's not running, is like the blades are like blocking airflow. It's, it's stupid. So we need to get rid of that too. So we're trying to clean up a whole bunch of stuff underneath here this is the before shot and uh now we'll go ahead and take it on test drive see how she runs i really don't feel bad do you think doesn't feel like a lot though a little, bit, a little bit why don't you like uh try to like floor it from the stop sign like from a dead stop I will. Just stop right here. You can, maybe he's coming. So John's not running air conditioning on this car. And uh, we got this big, uh, I think this is an accumulator here. And then inside here is your evaporator. 
uh, what we can do is if we pull this out of the way you can see here where this is separate this is actually part of this whole lid uh, there's a few screws around the perimeter if you take all these off this whole lid comes off and we can go ahead and take the whole uh, evaporator out which will get rid of these hoses that are poking out and it'll clean up this whole area since he's not using it anyway here's the heater box uh, we went ahead and removed the evaporator he's gonna make something to fill this hole later on but uh I'll show you how this comes off so you pull your motor out you unplug everything first get off there and then you have all these bolts go all the way around there's a, a piece of trim that goes across the windshield you pull that off there's a couple brackets go here and here you pull those out and then you just kind of just kind of get this over the slip of this thing pop it over that and then this just comes up like that that sits in there like that and it just pulls out and then you can put your lid back on like I said, he's gonna make something to cover this hole. But then you don't have the accumulator, you got a lot more room under the hood. So it works out pretty good. So here's the old uh, transmission pan. This gasket's like soaked. I think after a while, man, this cork just like kind of absorbs it all and it ends up just leaking out. It seems like anytime you have a cork gasket after a while, they just start leaking. And then if you look at the pan, it's got these raised, whoops, I'm making a mess. But it's got this, uh, if you look at the pan it has these raised ridges so if you were to bolt this back up without the gasket you'd have to fill in like these gaps here i'm thinking my rtv could probably do that but it's just better just to have one that has a flat pan rail like this plus this is aluminum which dissipates heat better so we're going to use the uh the old trusty right stuff here put it on here much like you would like a rear end cover or something and uh, this, should, this should never leak until somebody pulls it back off again. So here's the pan all RTV'd up. I put the uh, silicone in the center of the rail, except for here in the back, you actually have to use the back edge because the way the case is made, there's actually not anything to seal up to you in the middle. So do that back there and the rest of it in the center and this should never leak again. So we got all the old plug wires off. We, uh, we turned the motor over, you wanna make sure you're on top dead center and you want to make sure your rotor and your cap is facing cylinder number one which would be like this one right here i actually already did that so pull this out the shibby should sit like that when it's in the core this right here will be cylinder number one so i went ahead i marked that with the sharpie right there so all we gotta do you see my mark here all we gotta do is drop this on and then when that rotor lines up with this line, then it'll be uh, in the right spot, at least to get it running. And then you'll check it with the timing light and adjust it from there. So we got the distributor in. I did have to use the screwdriver to line up the, there's an oil pump drive in the bottom. You gotta get that lined up with the slot on the bottom of the distributor gear, which looks like this. Looks like that, that slot there, that has to slot in there. So if it's not clocked right, you gotta, I like to take the screwdriver and try to line it up but i got it in there my little mark lines up with my rotor right now i got the clamp on there it's a little snug it's not all the way tight because i'm probably gonna have to adjust it so we got that in there we're gonna go ahead and make our plug wires now so we got 30 foot of some uh, plug wire here and we got the uh, crimp on ends and the boots so we are going to take this in the garage and make us a set of plug wires so the reason i went with this style is because i like to hide them and I don't think they make plug wires that are routed the way that I route them. So we're making our own. So what you want to do is take the end of your wire. I already went and stripped it to where the center piece is hanging out. And then you just fold that back. And then you set this on top of it. And then you crimp it. So I got this little uh, MSD tool here. You fold that over slide this on and fit that inside here like that and then this goes over top of it and then you put it in the vise and you just run that tight
there you go. Nice little crimp there. So now I got the uh, end crimped on there. I'm gonna wait and put the boot on last. So you got two plug or two plug wires right here. And uh, for both these plug wires, I'm gonna run it in between the motor mount and the block right here. And I'm gonna hide it back that way. It's gonna go along the bottom of the block, behind the head and up there. So you're not really gonna be able to see it hardly, which is what I like. because it looks, I think really clean. So I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna feed this wire through here. For my number, I'm gonna start out with the number one spark plug, this one here. I'm gonna clip it on there and then I'm gonna route it and then I'm gonna cut it, leaving a little bit extra uh, in case, you know, whatever, just a few inches or whatever. And then uh, we'll make one for the number one plug wire here. And then uh, we'll just keep going and make them all. So we got the uh, passenger side ran. You can just see the boots. They're just zip tied to like a we zip tied. There's some wires going down to the starter and stuff we zip tied it to and uh got them going up here to the distributor the uh the driver's side is a little harder because there's not really anything to zip tie it to so uh we're going to use one of the holes in the block and then i made a piece we're going to bolt to it so i took some uh conduit clamps like i actually have some right here holding my air hose on just a regular conduit clamp like that I took uh, one of those, this is for one inch EMT. And then I welded, I just took a little piece of steel I had and I welded it across that gap to make it like a loop. And then we're gonna bolt this to the engine block and then they'll give us a spot to feed our wires through and they'll keep it off the headers and stuff. So here's how it looks after it's all done. <clears throat> I think it looks a lot cleaner. Don't have that wire running down there anymore. That's on the other side. <clears throat> you see the spark plug wires aren't all they go straight down right there and uh, kind of disappear and you see a couple of them pop up here he's going to get his <clears throat> I think he's going to send his headers out and have them coated that will clean those up but uh, you can see our little black bracket we made down here I don't know if you can see it or not that big bolt I got the wires running through there yeah, I think it looks pretty good. <clears throat> His air cleaner is rusty. He's going to replace that. But uh, it cleaned up a lot under the hood, all the wires and plug wires. There's a lot of stuff back on here behind the distributor. And uh, we got rid of quite a lot of unnecessary things. These hoses, instead of coming clear out here and back, they're, you know, they're routed pretty neatly right there. So it uh, looks pretty good. I told him too, I think it's going to get a new alternator bracket where it mounts down low, kind of like this power steering is. So when you look at it from this angle, you won't even be able to see any accessories at all. Just that motor sitting back here, that looked pretty nice. So uh, we got this distributor in, uh, got the timing light here. We got this thing all timed up. Uh, if you've never timed one of these before, uh, you just you take your timing gun. And you line up uh, mark there's a balancer down here with a timing tab you line those up and then you can adjust like right now it says 30 degrees you can adjust the degrees so what you do is you you adjust this until it lines up down there and you can check it at different rpms and stuff and see what the different timing is so what i set up on this one i give it there's there's three settings on your distributor you got first off when you put it on you don't hook up this vacuum can you leave that unhooked leave that capped off and you just see where it's at at idle okay so i check his it's about 10 degrees that's about where i wanted it okay then the next thing i did is uh revved it up uh seeing how early the spark comes in he's got about uh 30 degrees by 3000 that's that's pretty good you know i might prefer it to get all the way to 35 by three but that's not too bad um and then by 4,000, he has 35 degrees that's that's with the centrifugal and the the 10 that we start out with so uh that's exactly where i want it you want about 35 degrees with the can undone then i then i put it back at idle at 10 degrees and i plugged the can in to see how much the vacuum can added and uh it was adding like like 25 degrees which is way too much 
So this is an adjustable can. You see these cans right here? When they have this hex on there, that means they're adjustable. The ones that, uh, factory ones that don't have that hex, they're not adjustable. But this, I got the adjustable one. You take an Allen wrench and stick in that nipple and you can adjust it. So I adjusted that down to 10 degrees on that. So we got 10 degrees initial, 10 on the vacuum, 25 extra out of your centrifugal, which is the springs and weights that's inside there. So we got 35, like I said, when you rev it up, plus 10 on the can. So that's, that's pretty good. That's about what you want. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this thing for a spin and see how it runs. The carb, I don't think the carb is exactly dialed in with the fuel. Um, we're not gonna mess with that on this video, but uh, we're gonna take it for a drive anyway, see how it does. So it's pretty dark in here, but I can't do much about that. But we'll, see, we'll get our impressions of this thing now. Like I said, the fuel's not where it should be, so it will improve more, but we'll just do a side-by-side -side since the distributor swap. Go this way. There's more, there's a lot of cops <laughs> show up down that way. Feels, you think it feels better? Like, feels like, like a light throttle? Like, <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's more, much more responsive. More, more torque down there. Um, I mean, just from a standpoint of its drivability, it's, it's, it's incredibly better. Yeah, you know, better, right better, away. Yeah, you know, sharper throttle response and just a more drivable car. Yeah, no, this is, it's a big change. Oh, I feel bad about this. Ah, uh, there ain't nobody there. Oh, she, she raised it up, dude. Yeah, I let off. I yeah. didn't want to just make a bunch of rackets. It was going to do a burn out the whole way down the train. It was going to sit there for a second yeah. and spin them up. Pretty happy? Yeah. Yeah, heck yeah. They did, it had a little bit of G-force when you, when you <laughs> forwarded it back there. Yeah, it did. I was like, dang, this old girl, <laughs> she feels pretty good. Yeah, that was a little surprising. Vacuum advance is good on a street car, don't you think? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, dude. She, <laughs> I did not think. Cool. I didn't think she'd pull like this. I haven't really ridden in this thing, but that, can you? Do you think it's run better than it ever has? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all next time.